So, um, thank you very much for, first of all, considering me as, as the keynote speaker for the last part. Um, I am very, usually not nervous, but I hate to be nervous this time. It's both closing 10 years of my life and speaking in English. Which, if I speak a lot in English, I, would, I could do this better if it was in Spanish. Anyway, it's talking about 10 years. And how do I do this? The first thing I want to say is to recall the mission when I joined in. That was 2005. I joined uh, the CC Colombia team. And uh, that was the mission that appeared in Creative Commons um, website. The thing that... that was key there was the infrastructure. We were talking about infrastructure and we were meant that to be temporary. I recall when Larry Lessig came to the Colombian launching in 2006, somebody asked him what was the future of Creative Commons and what he said was, I hope that there is no future for Creative Commons. I hope one day there will be no need for the licenses because the problem will be solved. So the idea, the initial idea has always been this to be a temporary. We acknowledge from the first moment that there was a bigger problem. Apart from the inf infrastructure, however, something happened also, not before, the one before, and a community, a community appeared. A community that uh, precisely was a call for something that Mike commented this morning. There was, there was not a, a, only a U.S. problem, it was suddenly an international problem and a lot of people wanted to jump in. And this community generated three values I think are, are key to remember. Knowledge, sharing and action. The idea of the, the, the licensing was so powerful that all of a sudden evolved into a knowledge community that was very keen on sharing what they were not only knowing, but learning, and also uh, was so powerful that provide us with an action. There was a plan of action, a micro plan of action, kind of, of the power that in democracy gives you to vote. You know that one vote is hardly something, but when you sum up many of them, then there's a powerful political action. Well, um, I think that what I want to say is that this community is the one that provoked an immense reaction. Can you change it? It is really something powerful to think that a small uh, tool can allow you to change something, especially something that is a paradigm strongly rooted. So during this decade, and that was me then, back then, uh, you can see that no, it's not only Ignacy or, or Paul who had lost hair, also me. We were young back then. Um, and during that decade, many things uh, occur. It happens that we uh, develop a tool, we implement the tool, and we succeed. Something that probably many of us were a bit afraid of whether it was going to happen or not, it happened. But probably the thing to, to highlight is how we managed to succeed. And I would like to say, first of all, that just as happened, with the internet, this was an academic strategy. It was built from a university classroom. Everybody has said that, but what does that mean? If this tool would have been developed in a law firm, we might have had a completely different result, but it was in a, in a room, and this means that it evolved as a learning process. It's meant to recreate the idea of sharing as its very core. Okay, because of that, in very, very few months and years, it was global. It was decentralized, but it allowed localization. And that was the basis of our community in the beginning. This community has a, a strong um, idea on the, or a base better, on the idea of sharing and learning. And even if there was control, we all signed MOUs we can say that the control was a loose control. We, how many of you have ever respected the idea of not doing advocacy, for instance? And how many of you were challenged for that? Nobody. So we really grew up under, that, under those ideas. If I look behind those 10 years, I recall many people that was very important 
for what I did afterwards. Mike Carroll, Mike Linksweyer, Leslie, of course, but from the staff, Katrina, Michelle, I'm sure I I'm going to skip somebody. Lately, of course, Diane. There has been a lot of key people in staff, but I, I have to say that probably the ones I learned the most were my peers, all the network of affiliates. There were ones that were behind me, ones that were in front of me. But the idea of knowing who to go and ask for something and get a reply was in tremendously important when I decided to do something. And at that, back that time, it was the, the list, the mailing list will jump with cases, with ideas, with uh, problems, with mistakes that we all committed. So we all learn a lot. And I would say by that, that not just the affiliates, I'm sure the result of the licenses was also a learning process of the headquarters with the affiliates. Otherwise, remember this morning, Mike saying, I'm sorry, I was a US teacher. He learned a lot in the process, just as us. So we all know now that there are different legal systems, what the differences are. We have developed a tool, but a tool that has four versions because we didn't do it right the first time. It needed four versions and it's still not right. It, it needs a lot of perfection. We fixed problem, we did versions. We developed also a capacity for advocacy and for community management. Never in my life before I joined Creative Commons was able, was, had I ever talked to somebody from the policy makers or to a crowd of people trying to convince them to do something crazy like, like Jessica said, and I learned it through Creative Commons. And I have to say that I joined Creative Commons when I was not exactly a young girl. So what happened 10 years later? Here we are now. It's 10 years later, 10 years from 2005, and we succeed. And it is time to remember what we had then was a temporary achievement. And it's nice to know that we succeed. Certainly, we changed the copyright system as far as what a legal hack can do. We certainly facilitated the development of an open internet, and that has been said during the last three days. In so many ways, I'm not gonna repeat. The success, however, pulled away the main purpose of the community, the structure, the capacity. It all changed. And how are we now? How's this network right now? That is the big question, and it's not something that happened one day for another. We've been evolving for many years, but the truth today is that we're different, completely different from the original version. What, co what this summit confirmed to me is that probably we have two CCs. We have an organization, a Creative Commons organization, a very successful Creative Commons organization that is also uh, essentially working on what I call the last mile. What is the last mile? When you have internet connection in a country, it is quite easy to provide almost 80% of the connectivity in a country. But the last mile, the 20%, and so far you go deep and deep. The last one mile, that one is really expensive and it takes a lot of effort to connect. Because those are the most far away, there's no satellital, there's, there's a huge problem there. And it's the same here. The, the tool as such is there. It's not perfect, but it's there, and we nailed it. But now we have the 3D printing problems. We have still problems in open access for tools, in OERs. There's a lot of things to do there, and not just as a tool, as a community as well. There's diversity. There are countries that already left away this discussion. There are newcomers that need to give this discussion. So there's a last mile where CC organization needs to work, that for sure. But in the Creative Commons community, probably the main purpose has switched. I'm not saying that in the Creative Commons community, people is not working there. Yes, they are, but that's just like part of their ordinary life, or is those newcomers that need to work there. What we have seen is that many, many of our affiliates are now working somewhere else. They are working in advocacy and policy. So Creative Commons works a little bit in policy, it works a, a lot in policy, mainly in the US. But they are lacking a lot more work on advocacy, whereas in the Creative Commons um, 
community, we might have the different balance. And then this means what I will call for purpose of this conversation a uh, two sides creative commons. I think we have an opportunity here to recover the CC energy that provoked this change because by these two CCs, we have lost that that was originally the learning process, the sharing. The I heard just a few minutes ago Ryan saying, what are we going to do with those newcomers? How we teach them that? And I heard also there's a group for mentoring. So it seems like we know there's a problem there. We have to cope with it. But in the past, it was just natural. We were doing that. What do we lost that there is no learning process in the Creative Commons community now. Of course, we're looking for it, but we have nailed it. There's a problem there. How can we return to that? What, it, what will be our next challenge? Because also, newcomers have that one, but the old ones, we need a new challenge. Probably for us, just, you know, again, another tool for open access. Where is the, the new challenge? How do we provoke that that is change? Well, we have then other 10 years, I hope, and many more, but let's think on the next 10 years challenges, and I'll do it from what I am giving these suppositions. I'm leaving aside a lot of things, but I just want to talk about this small problem of how to provoke, uh, again, this environment of learning in the community. If I am right, my first thing is, how can we drive a process to reach a shared mission with the community for the next 10 years? So we need a process. As much as we also need, how are we going to define those common goals? I promise you, I wrote this before the meeting that we had. So again, <laughs> this is, I'm just trying to make the closing remarks. So it seems like we are all in the same page. These are our next challenges. But the most important thing probably is we should ask ourselves from our own position how we do it. Because if we don't, what we're going to lose is the power uh, that, that provoke the change we did during the last years. We will have no innovation power. We will be doing only the last mile. And that's a temporary, pro, uh, that's a temporary tool. If we keep on succeeding, it will disappear. So we will lose the innovation part if we don't make those two CCs work together. If you are all with me, I think there are more, there are specific four challenges that we should be addressing. How can CC reflect better the international character? I know I, I always I am a bit of pain in the ass with this, but it's true. We have a full diversity of people here. And it, it means a lot of things. It means gender, connectivity, geography, everything. We have to think from there. I'm just using one of um, Alex's examples, State of Open. It's a great tool for CC to raise funds, and we need that. But if you don't involve the community, you will just have a nice CC state of the, of the commons for an organization. I understand that it's a pain in the ass to get all the, com all the people here to contribute to the commons. That would be a difficult task. But what about if we think that there's going to be a state of the commons every year for the organization? That's nice. We all can use the numbers. But every five years, every four years, one that will give numbers to the regions, numbers to us, that tell us who uses our thing. Where does the, that come from? Because for me, there's 10 million of whatever in Flickr or in Wikipedia. It's not telling, it's telling me the value we're giving to an American corporation. But it's not telling me how much my work worked, sorry, uh, my English is not perfect, so you just take those. Um, what did meant my work in Colombia? That's not reflecting that. This is going to be hard. Of course, you will need a community manager, somebody that pings on me every two months and say, hey, Carolina, do you remember? I sent you an email. Of course. But you will have a much better result there. What about women? We need more gender equality. The board has to acknowledge this diversity. We need geographic representation. We need women. We need, when we have our, uh, an event like this one, I'm sorry, but 
it is not nice to have only four white men in front of me. We need women and we need geography representation. It is hard because in our regions this is not something, it's hard to find them, but we, we have to do it. And probably it's also a call for us. If we manage to start raising the people that is in our regions and sending them, there's somebody that could be in the board. Here's another person. So here from Latin America, from the Arab world. If we start, I know the word Spanish, I don't know it in English, you imagine it, but poking somebody, it might happen one day. How will the CC organization work on a sustainable last mile? This last mile is key, it's key for many of, of you for small, for, for, yeah, for the last mile. So how are we gonna work with it and how is going to be the engagement of the community? How will the, co the Creative Commons organization connect to the community that is increasingly diverse because the main task that used to keep us together is no longer there? And what do I mean with that? Main problem here is we used to be lawyers, mainly lawyers. It's not like that anymore. Now we have a lot of public uh, leaders and people coming in, and that reflects a change as well. So if we don't have the licenses, if our community is so diverse, if there's a huge tax on making that connection and understanding that if we don't do that again, we will lose the opportunity of innovation. And the problem also here is that there is interest. I can see Creative Commons willing to continue to have a community, an international community. I don't see Creative Commons saying I don't want to do that anymore. So I'm sure there's an interest here. And there is an interest, I can hear it from the affiliates, at least me, and I know most of us who live those first years of Creative Commons, who, who can blame us for not willing to ask a more participant and alive community. It's so much that we learn that it's, it's just not fair uh, to tell us that we can wait and do just what the organization, the space of the organization open us for us to do the things. So, and the last one. Can we think, I'm just hearing so much lately about privacy by design, security by design. Why don't we think on this organization on a community by design project? It's just that when you said that you're going to implement a technology to communicate with affiliates, you can't do it just thinking on what works in the US or New Zealand. You have to do it to work for me, when I am in my farm, when I have to take my myself, go to the mountain and start doing like this to try to, that's what happened to me. And it's an hour and a half from Bogota. And I have to find the damn signal. If I manage to get an email, that's good. So please consider digital divide, diversity, gender, and let's continue diversity. This is mostly what I wanted to say. Um, thank you, I, I am the most grateful. I was a corporate lawyer, I switched, and all my, my masters were commercial law, international, whatever. This was my, my university. So I am the most thankful for the network. I will continue around, I am the affiliate for Colombia, but my boss in Creative Commons will continue to be Juliana and Luisa, who's not here. Thanks, thanks, thanks a lot.